know, um, you had some connections to the former premier of China. That's who he was, right? Wen uh, Jiabao. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I'm kind of I'm kind of curious about that because that ties into a lot of the factional stuff that's happening in China. Um, which part of it yeah, you you would like to talk about? Uh, well, just how you got into that, how that connection was created, and you know what that got you or what that cost you in the end. I think what happened. Well, what, what happened was um, Whitney had a dinner with uh, we call her Auntie Zhang, right, the wife of uh, wife of Wen Jiabao, and um, so they struck up uh, the relationship from there and. And then Wen Jiabao, I mean, Auntie Zhang, you know, they are, they are not red aristocracy. They're not red aristocrat. They are like, you know, they are common and rise through the rank. So when people in that kind of situation, they don't really, really have a clan, so to speak. So the red aristocrat, because they basically grow up in Beijing, you know, they go to specific schools. So they have a network from their, 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 their childhood. Their, their relatives are already in the system. So they, are, they have a web of relationship in the system. And when Jabao, you know, his family rise through the rank, you know, I don't, you know, they don't have a clan to speak of. Uh, so at, 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 at the early stage, so you, 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 so we become part of that clan. And then we, you know, we, we, we do business together, we become business partners. So, so that, you know, you know, if actually they, you are uh, like a red arrow square, they already have a built-in clan, like, you know, from history. It's actually even, it's, it's very difficult, you know, to be involved in those clans. It's a different situation. But yeah, yeah when Jabao's case, you know, yeah, we are, what, what happened was uh, we, we built a relationship with the wife and then eventually become a business partner with them. Yeah. And so what what did Wen Jiabao do as your business partner? Like what role did he play in helping you, you know, get deals or, or do developments or? or um... As I, as I you know, talk about in the book, I mean, I actually don't believe uh, he was involved in, uh, in this. And then he's very aware of what his family is actually doing. He's so damn busy, you know, <laughs> going to uh, going to the office and, um, you know, doing what he's uh, supposed to do. Uh, what happened was, uh, what happened was basically when we get into that kind of situation, then I, I you know, I have in a book, I, that's a private slide that Air Force, you know, so their family, you know, the Auntie Jan become the Air Force, you know, so you have a fighter jet, you know, flying above you on in the sky. Everybody sort of look at that. Whoa, that's a powerful jet. And then we are the infantrymen, right? We are an, an infantrymen actually doing the execution on the ground, taking real grounds, right? And that's what happened. I think that's a very lively, uh, vivid, ex- you know, sort of description. I see. And so, so, in exchange for having that that protection mm-hmm. uh, or that that powerful jet flying overhead, mm-hmm. uh, they got part of your business. Yeah. Or they got some money from it. Yeah, they take thirty percent profit in general. Wow, that's substantial. That's. Uh, I think that's the the. the May I say it's the market going rate for 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 <laughs> you know, a situation like that, which should like you know it's just the the that's what the red red, red to credit do. I like it. It's the Communist Party's market rate. Yeah, it's so interesting to me that just you know there's this anecdote you talk about in the book where just having you know, Whitney just having Auntie Jiang sitting. Like if if you're meeting at a restaurant and she's just like sitting there and she doesn't say anything, just knowing that she's there means that she supports the project, which means, you know, the the Wen family supports it. Uh, yeah, it's it's really fascinating. Yeah, I mean that's that's part of the game. You know, I talk about you know we talk about earlier. It's just every move. It's uh, it's it's being re- uh, re- read into, and then you need to how to know how to read into the game. I, I mean, she she doesn't. Well, she won't be sitting any dinner with anybody. Why is she there, right? I mean, so people who, who are in the game just seeing her there, it's like okay, okay. And then you look at, listen to what she has to say about the next person. You're like, okay, I'm getting hints here. Well, considering that that is how things are done, what what is the significance of when? Uh, Chinese businessmen or Chinese officials try to make those kind of connections to 
U.S. officials, like Hunter Biden, for instance, or man, there, there's a million of those examples. Right. I mean, you know, if you just, you know, look at the Communist Party's uh, operation manual, if those, uh, so to speak, right, and the, and the design and started by Mao, right? Because he said that, that Mao, you know, Mao, you know, won the war and then, you know, take over China. He said the three weapons, the key three weapons of, uh, uh, in his eye, to to take over China. Number one is United Front. Number two is party apparatus. Number three is military power. Hmm. Number one is United Front. What does that mean? That means capture opinion leaders, capture elites of the society, sway the opinion of the society. So like Hunter Biden's situation is part of the program of elite capturing. And then it's, 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 a, it's, the same, it's, it's the same, still the same operating menu. He hasn't changed. Hmm. It's no accident, you know, like a lot of elites in the West, you know, come out to speak on behalf of China. It's, it's part of the program. Yeah, like people like Larry Fink, uh, CEO of BlackRock. Right. I mean, he's very just like China's a great country. Everything's going to be great. Triple, you know, triple your investments. But he's been elite captured. When they arrive in China, they are being presented very, very different China. So that's that's one one side of the game. The other side of the game is they infiltrate all of the all the people around you. And then try to use those people to sway your opinion. And don't ever, you know, like a people, a person like Larry Fink, you know, he gets into China, he thinks he's building real relationship with some individuals in China, in the, those people in the know, and then they're feeding him like insider information about China. So he has a real insider knowledge of China. Crap. Those people, I, I guarantee you, I guarantee you, every one of them, after meeting him, go back and write a report. <laughs> oh, that's so dehumanizing. <laughs> uh, that's the theme. Well, I mean, it's it's also just like there's this superiority about it, right? That like, you know, Larry Fink thinks he's going in and getting something, and then like Captain on the other of industry. S- and the other side, they're like, this guy, you know, he's it, such it, an idiot. We're it, taking advantage of his yeah, greed. He has yeah. no idea. Yeah. It's it's a it's a complete amount. You, you know you. you He's being, you know, when he is in China, he's being completely manipulated. You know, this 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 entire environment around him is man-made for him at that particular point in time. And unfortunately, he then has a significant influence over the oh, UN, uh, yeah, United Wall States, Street, Wall Street, U.S. government. Yeah. No, great. Are you are you concerned at all about you know what you said in the book? Like now, the book's out. They obviously pressured you to not publish. Are you concerned about, you know, any retaliation from it? You know, uh, uh, I mean, a, a, a journalist uh, the other day, you know, look at me and then said, you know, you and, t- and tell me that, you know, you'll be a mock man for the CCP for the rest of your life, right? I mean, <laughs> I mean, I, I am prepared for it when I decide to publish it, but to have it say it in your face, it's just... You know, it, it still sends a chill down my spine. Um, it, it, well, and then the other thing I have to say is, you know, a party state can lock up a woman for four years in a dark cell is capable of all evils. Well, it was a, a very brave thing you did to to publish the book. The book is Red Roulette. I'll put a link in the description below. Be sure to check it out. It's fascinating. Desmond, thank you so much for joining us today and. Hope to have you on again sometime soon. Yeah, yeah. I will, I will. Let me know. Let me know. Well, I really learned a lot from that interview and, and especially his book. For instance, I always thought it was pronounced roulette. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, that's why you never want any money uh, at the roulette wheel. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. go to Vegas and ask for the roulette table and people would. Yeah. And apparently it's it's not pronounced ballot. It's ballet. <laughs> yeah, but uh, it was a, uh, I mean, that's a really fascinating insight into business because the like 99% of people 
who are doing business in China, maybe 100% of them and 99% of people who've left still won't tell you what it's really like because there's so much incentive to like just keep that stuff secret. Well, yeah. I mean, I think on one hand, it's, you know, you've probably had to do some things you're not especially proud of. Uh, oh, yeah. You know, or, you know, you're worried that whatever you do, did or say could come back they could they could still definitely go after you even if you're outside china right i mean clearly they have a tendency to make people disappear who are close to you yeah well i think that's interesting that like obviously they're a little touchy about this if her uh, his ex-wife suddenly reappeared and just was like please don't publish the book yeah well i admire his courage for just publishing it anyway knowing that there could be a risk to, to her or to himself. But of course, he's right because like, if you give in to what the party wants, you're probably not going to win in the end. Yeah. I mean, publishing it definitely is better for his wife yes. than not publishing it. Right. I mean, yeah. always, always shine a light in the darkness, uh, even if, you know, the bad guys don't want you to do it. Yeah. I mean, I think, it, you know, it's, it's super interesting. And you know, I like how he was like, you know, I'm not really ashamed of anything I've done. I'm willing to put it out there yeah. and kind of like tell the real story. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, that's it's it's great that there is now a book like this that's been published. It's out in the public record. Mm-hmm. 